Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd of Bishop's RV here with a balding hairline and a bad hair day all at one time, which is a rare set of features that is not easy to combine with an Ibex 20 MDS that combines its own rare set of features. I didn't do that segue on purpose, but hey, it works. So what's funny is if you look at this floor plan, a lot of builders make something like this, but they almost always have uh, a set of double over double bunks in the back corner. Ibex didn't do that here. They made this one just really for couples. Now, you've got a dinette slide. That's probably the DS in MDS, while the M is Murphy more than likely. But it's it, there's no bunks. It's just uh, a, a nice rear bathroom with some really good storage, an excellent headroom up in that shower, and a big Fajita Friday fume fight and fart fan in that sucker. To go along with the fact that the whole RV has taller ceilings, it's eight foot wide, has a big wide open feel about it, especially in front of that true queen bed. If you put that true queen bed away and flip it over to Murphy mode, it feels enormous in this RV, but it is not that large of a floor plan. It's actually deceptively short, and I mean that in the best possible way. Um, the thing is, it's small, it's light, it has a really good cargo capacity, but it also has about the best riding handling suspension you can find out there. They call it beast mode, but it's that Kurt Trailing Arm Independent Suspension System. It's an off-road suspension package that just happens to also work really well going down highways. But the thing is, if you want an RV to hold together longer, you take a lot of the violence and shaking out of the transit portion of the RV, this has a better suspension that does more of that. It also has a thicker floor to absorb more of it and a thicker roof to absorb more of it. I personally feel this is an RV that it might have a couple little glitches, hitches in the skinny up now and then. But overall, I think that Ibex is a brand that is probably going to stay out of the shop uh, more often than a lot of other things. But uh, this RV has good things, it has bad things. Let's go through them and see how you feel about it. And don't get me wrong, this RV has a lot of really great features, but I always just try to look at the layout. The floor plan for me always comes first, because I don't care what features an RV has. If it doesn't have the furniture in the position that I want, I ain't gonna like it. It's just that simple. Well, this thing, it's only 23 and a half feet total length, but it feels enormous inside. The deep slide, the carpetless, the light colors, um, and the taller ceiling. It just feels big in here, especially when you put that Murphy bed away and you just put it in sofa mode. Uh, before we get there up top, you do have a 15,000 BTU centralized air system, which is kind of nice. And you may have noticed the slide side breeze windows over here. That's something like there's also the, uh, the essentials, uh, only edition of Ibex. I don't think they make this floor plan in that, but um, that, that's the extra kind of widgets and whiz bangs that you will not get to enjoy there. Kind of like the fact that this has, uh, 400 watts of solar standard up on the roof right from the factory, as well as a 2000 watt pure sign inverter to all household outlets, uh, in this RV. So, um... There, there's a lot of stuff that they're doing in this that is that is pretty cool. Now, it, this isn't a model, I think, that really excels for campsite window coverage, but it also doesn't suck. It's not like it's deficient in that regard by any means. I also really like how Ibex has become very good at putting USB plugs and household plugs all over your sitting uh, kind of sleeping spaces here. Um, I noticed, too, in the kitchen... They tend to do a lot of outlets just under the countertop line. There's another set on the side of the cabinet over here you might spy later in the video. I would like to ask you, what do you think about the sink setup on this? It's, it's deceptively deep. Let me get this out of the way. It is deceptively deep because when you look at that, I don't think you can really get a full perspective of it. Like, I... I'm pretty deep into that sucker right there. I'm about as deep into that as my Uncle Gary is into debt after that lawnmower incident. But neither here nor there, you get the idea. Um, It's big, but is the shape good, bad, ugly, in between? I don't know. You let me know, and we're going to keep on keeping on going from there. Um, working our way around, actually. Let's just start doing that. I, um, they They do more lighting in these than they do in the Essentials Only Edition also. People don't realize uh, lights and windows are very often, in terms of total cost effect on an RV, the two most expensive things in an RV. You're like, what are you talking about? Lights aren't expensive. The light fixture itself, probably not terribly expensive, certainly. But when you consider 
it takes engineering time and it takes labor time and there's copper wire runs and there's all the different things that go into making that light happen, it actually becomes very expensive. Lights and windows are expensive in the RV industry. So if a manufacturer wants to cut a bunch of money out of a camper, what they'll do is instead of doubling up the lighting like they've done here, they'll just run a single row of lights dead down the center of this sucker. Um, and the fact is, I think like over 90% of RVs while people are shopping, they are displayed to a customer without power lit up. So like what I'm doing here is exceptionally rare and uncommon, which is baffling to me. That's just stupid, lazy salesmanship. Um, or it's just lack of training. You know, it's not always just a a lazy person. Sometimes it just reflects the culture and the leadership of the store, but I've always been trained. Keep a battery box with me. Keep them plugged in. Keep them lit up because if I was going to spend this kind of money, I think I would sure as crap want to see the lights on and I extend that same courtesy to you folks. Now they go with extended kind of maximized overhead cabinet storage here, but that means they don't have an overhead microwave. Instead, they do something down here that I personally really like, but I know for some folks, it ain't gonna fly. And that is that they put a convection microwave down here um, below the countertop line. It doesn't, that's not everyone's favorite thing. By the way, the refrigerator changes depending on where the RV was built. So um, in the mad, mad, I can't, <laughs> I can't talk, I'm so tired, it's the end of the day. In the Midwest where I'm from, you're going to get uh, the 12 volt compressor fridge. It's a little over 10 cubic foot. The Ibex is built out west have a six cubic foot gas and electric refrigerator. So kind of keep that in mind. And when we go outside, you're going to see what the little um, naughty paddle over here is going to do for you. So make sure you eat your vegetables so you don't end up getting, you know, banged on the backside with that sucker out there. Entry door window, by the way, prepped for privacy shade, but not actually factory included. Um, giving you a look at the Burphy bed here, one of the cool things about it is it is 60 by 80, and I'm going to have to flip you over to fisheye wide angle lens real quick. So real quick, let you get your bearings, then we'll take a look at the storage here. Now, you might have noticed the accent lights on those cabinets. Those can be turned off if that's not your thing. And folding this bed up and down is about as simple and easy as it gets. My chicken arms can manage it. I feel very confidently yours probably could, too. Um, they're, they have some nice pockets uh, behind those hanging wardrobe towers. For, like if you want to set a phone or something there but they don't actually have power run to them. So kind of keep that in mind. Your power outlets are in the front of the closet. Where would you prefer the outlets to be, by the way? I'm kind of curious. I don't know that there is a right way. don't know that there is a wrong way. Um, the, uh, the bed again is a true queen 60 by 80 in size, which means like if you don't care about the Murphy function, you don't have to use it like a Murphy bed. You could just use it like a normal queen because you're going to see later in the video, you can very easily close the uh, the uh, the slide out with the bed in the down position. That's actually probably how I would most of the time travel with it. Just in case that like latch bangs loose or something like that, you don't got to worry about it. Now over here um, in the slide, obviously that table can fold down into a sleeper and you can see that there is storage below it as well. Uh, the, uh, the TV, you might notice pivots a little bit. It's not like a smart TV or anything, but you're one Roku upgrade away from making that happen. That's not super, super difficult by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, we already kind of told you about the refrigerator. There's a couple little things I'd personally like to see maybe tweaked on this a little bit. Uh, again, I'm curious what you, you think about the sink. I, I, a rectangular sink, I think I would like it would eat up more of the limited counter space, but that shelf below the sink in that cabinet down there, I kind of wish it wasn't there because that would give me a wastebasket space. And I know I talk about that a lot in my videos, but if you actually camp a couple times, you realize how useful and handy that is. Again, convection microwave oven down there. Now that converter, when the slide closes, you can slip it, it well, as memory serves. You know what? I don't want to over promise and under deliver. I can't remember if you can get to that or not, um, or the bathroom. So hang tight for road mode and I'll get it all closed up for you in just a few minutes here. But uh, in the meantime, we're going to move back to the bathroom. The cabinetry, I know I'm jumping around all over the place. The cabinetry, by the way, is all pocket screwed and lumber core, so it's not just stapled fasteners. The taller ceiling in here, though, means the headroom in that shower, even with me wearing shoes, is pretty awesome. Oh, by the way, let me, I'm going to slowly get you in here around the corner. Your full blood Ibex is like this. The beast mode Ibexes is the easiest way to think about it. They do maintain the shower miser uh, water saver system right there. And that is, as you'll see as I continue to pan downward slowly, 
uh, a uh, uh, an easy step in kind of shower. Now it does technically have a shower curtain, but it's all on a track. So it kind of, here, let me, again, I'm gonna do this slowly so I'm not whipping you around making you motion sick. If I actually pull this shut, you can see that it's not the kind of shower curtain that's like gonna constantly grab you and stick to you. And because it has the, the radius track up top, it actually gives you decent elbow room. I'm, I'm kind of a fan, actually. I, I would be very curious, anybody who owns a camper that has something like that, how do you like it? Because on paper, having never used it, I think I kind of like the idea of that. Um, your counter space in the bathroom is, uh, whoa, I mean, it's fantastic, guys. I mean, look at all of it. I'm being facetious, obviously. There's, <laughs> there is no counter space in the bathroom. <laughs> but uh, that means you have excellent space around the toilet as a result, because you're not elbow bonking that thing the entire time. Now, if I start getting you all the way up here, it looks like the bathroom's not too much bigger, but what you don't realize is how much storage is over there. We're going to open that up in just a second. First of all, though, I want to give them some credit for including from the factory the bigger vent fan. It does not have the roof vent cover factory standard, but it's all prepped for one, so it's, like, easily clipped in place. There's no, like, uh, big fasteners or anything that have to get attached in there. Now, um, taking a look at the extra X-ray vision footage that I have here for you, the left side of that storage... Uh, if you look up in there, you can see there's actually a hanging rod. Well, the right-hand side, it's just shelf upon shelf upon shelf. You could use it. My, my grandmother had an RV with a similar kind of rear bathroom, and she would keep um, extra canned goods uh, in, in some of that shelving and, you know, some towels. And I know that sounds weird, but when you're camping, sometimes you got to get creative to make it all work. So uh, it, just because it's in the bathroom doesn't mean it has to be used exclusively for things like, you know, towels and body washes and uh, I, obviously all the hair care products that I need. By the way, here's a pro tip for you from your Uncle Josh. You see how I've got that TV hanging out there? If I close that slide right now, I'm going to smash the living crap out of that television. Make sure you put the TV back and buckle strap it in place before you close that slide. Because if you don't, <laughs> it's going to be a bad day at the office. Okay, so this is what I was thinking road mode was going to be like. Um, some of their smaller models are the same way. It's a little tight, but I can butt scoot my way through that thing and do a sideways travel trailer two-step to get there. And with the slide closed, there's absolutely no question as to whether you can or cannot leave the bed down in transit. So the bed remains functional on this one. You retain the use of the dining bar. You can probably slide through and get to the kitchen. You can probably slide through and get to the bath. And that fuse box that we talked about earlier. So overall, this one has some pretty fair travel access. Maybe not perfect for everybody, but definitely good enough for me. So one of the craziest things about this RV though is uh, the length. It's only 23 and a half feet total. Like not 23 and a half foot box plus tongue and bumper. It's 23 and a half feet total. Now that is actually the, the length of an RV. That is a, a factor you have to watch some manufacturers on because there are some builders out there who um, have been doing this cute game recently where they're not actually telling you the full length of the RV. What they're doing is they're telling you like um, from the hitch pin to like the rear wall, but they're not including things like the total tongue or like the bumper or something like that. So they're reading arbitrarily, artificially short. And um, I actually had a customer kind of mention something to me on um, like something Rockwood was doing. And obviously I'm not telling you about Ibex right here. I'm just kind of teaching you how to fish, how to plan and how to shop for RVs and avoid problems. But um I mentioned that the Rockwood model he was looking at was 29 feet, 11 inches. And he said, I was glad I built a 32 foot garage or barn rather, because when he got done putting his 30 foot camper in his 32 foot garage, he only had one foot left behind it. And he was like, what? Well, their measurement did not include the spare tire. I never thought about that. So unintentionally, you know, I was just sharing the information that was on the specs, but some manufacturers don't exactly explain what their specs mean. So you always want to keep in mind on that. Now back to the Ibex here. Sorry about that. It's been a minute 37 talking about other stuff, but I think valuable stuff. Um, 
tire pressure monitoring standard on these. And you might wonder like, why are they using that knobby tread tire kind of thing? The, the reason being because these tires have a stronger sidewall. So if you do feel like getting this camper off the beaten path, if you want to take it, um, make it a uh, an off pavement camper. And with that suspension package, you, you could. Um, if you do happen to rub into some rocks or something like that, it's less likely to damage your tire. So that's why they're using that system right there. Now, uh, working our way up here, they don't do a full on camp kitchen. Not everybody wants a full on camp kitchen. Some people do. We've got other campers for you if you do. What they've started doing here is they've expanded on their little griddle station. So if you notice, you still have the same griddle down below and it still does come with the griddle top. But these are also currently, at the time of this filming, it's a limited time thing. We'll see if they continue to include the little, I don't know, pizza griddle? <laughs> pizza oven for the cookies and biscuits and the Tostino's pizzas. I tell you what. I gotta love the internet because I saw something that made me so proud of this country the other day. Um, I saw some kid wanted pizza cake for his birthday. And that was basically um, Totino's party pizzas stacked about 10 high, like a multi-layer pizza. God bless America, this country is amazing. I can't wait to go home and make one of those. Um, uh, my wife, by the way, doesn't let us doesn't let me cook dinner anymore because the last time I did, I literally made us green eggs and ham and I set it down in front of her after she had a long day and she just goes, what, what is this? And I was like, you know what it is. And she goes, you are never cooking again, which as far as she knows was probably my goal to begin with. Neither here nor there though. Um, I'm not talking about a Ibex again. I'm so sorry. It's the end of the day. I'm very tired. So hopefully you're enjoying the, I don't know, off topic chat so under here you can't see much because of the shadowing but it is enclosed it also does have 12 volt holding tank heaters but it's a single sewer outlet which is nice and your gate valves if you notice are enclosed in that belly as well i want to be clear that is not directly forced air heated down there they just have the holding tank heaters rockwood does the same thing and a lot of people seem to be happy camping with those 250 pound rated ladder going up here. I got some weirdness happening with my camera, by the way. So if the image isn't quite as stable as it normally is, I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on. I might have to restart this thing. Um, cameras are practically computers nowadays. Up top, you see the 400 watts of solar. That is um, basically now standard, uh, which is a very cool thing. It's being marketed as a limited time thing, but I have it on very good authority that it is probably going to stay there. So you have 400 watts of solar and 2,000 watts of inversion standard on these. That doesn't suck. That's better than almost anybody else industry standard anyway. Now, Keystone's optional solar packages can do that sometimes or more, but factory standard is, is one of the best solar packages I've seen for this kind of money and size of camper, you know? And that's the thing. Ibex isn't made to be the biggest, most rugged, heavy-duty, off-grid kind of camper. It's an interesting kind of in-betweener where it does about 90% of a lot of those big high dollar things without going all the way neck deep. Like you can accomplish, it's that 90-10 rule. You can accomplish 90% of things with 10% effort or cost in this case. But if you want to go that extra 10%, it's going to cost you another 90% cost. So Ibex is really kind of smashing that value button on these. Um, you may have noticed the, the black lines up on the roof, the cargo rack system. If you want to add kayak racks or bike racks or cargo pods, you could. And you've got a three uh, quarter inch roof deck instead of three eighths like a lot of brands. So thicker roof decking, uh, if you're not a math wizard. Um, you also have a thicker floor decking, by the way, on these. But you, um, you, you could use those cargo racks if you wanted to, to mount maybe like more solar panels. But to do that, you're going to have to start modifying and changing things like the charge controllers and whatnot. But it's not necessarily impossible to do on one of these. You can see a couple behind me here. What you don't see are a lot of other trailers out in the yard that got pulled in and out. And I really thank Ibex for staging us up and helping us get a bunch of different footage on a lot of models today. It was very kind of them. Um, I got up early. I've been here 
late. Everyone else has gone home and I'm here pounding footage for you. So hope you appreciate the effort and, you know, telling you like, hey, this is what it does. This is what it doesn't do. Just trying to shoot you straight on that stuff. If you appreciate that, hit that subscribe button. And in the meantime, of course, I'll leave you links in the description to check pricing and availability. So if you want to see what one of these is running and where we have it parked, it's all one click away. Short of that, thanks again. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and I'm going to drive home now, everyone. Thank you.